People often tend to think that toxic relationships, toxic parents, toxic partners, toxic friends are quite rare or that if you were ever caught up in that sort of dynamic, you would just simply up and leave and cut them off and it'd be easy and we often think it wouldn't happen to us until it happens to us and I think it takes an average of seven attempts to leave a toxic relationship. Now when it comes to narcissistic and emotional abuse it's not a case of someone just hits you and you know they're a toxic individual and you can walk free from the offset. It doesn't quite work like that. Narcissistic individuals go all out to love bomb you, to treat you well and then they devalue you and blame you and make you feel like it's your fault, like there's something wrong with you. It's not as simple as just being able to recognise the toxic behaviour because we're human. We all make errors in judgement. We all make mistakes. We can all not answer somebody back straight away. We can all take time in order to answer a question. We all might not be able to pick up that phone instantly. We can all make mistakes in life. So a lot of narcissistic behaviours can be excused and they can be justified. People can have a lot on their plate. People can be stressed. People can be depressed. So it's easy to justify a narcissistic individual's behaviour. With a narcissistic individual, it's often those around them that's negatively impact and it's a pervasive pattern of behaviour. It's who they are as a person. There's lots of different factors that keep people trapped in narcissistic relationships, from financial factors to caring about the person you are with to not wanting to remove yourself from the lives of the people who raised you, from external family members to having children with someone. There's so many different reasons why people stay. And then there's also the cognitive bias within our own mind, our own faulty thinking due to the dynamics of the relationship we're in with a narcissistic individual. And cognitive bias is where we create our own sort of thought process, our own reality, our own subjective to reality that helps us manage the situation we're in, not recognising that it can actually keep us trapped in a place we shouldn't be. With narcissistic abuse, cognitive bias plays a significant impact on our decision-making skills and it often leads to those errors in judgement and our faulty thinking about the relationship that we are in with a narcissistic individual. And it's often down to the narcissist future-faking and love-bombing and Narcissistic individuals will mirror who you are as a person to sell you an illusion of what you would like them to be and then deliver you an absolute nightmare. When it comes to cognitive bias, we can have confirmation bias where we go all out to seek out the information that confirms pre-existing beliefs. It reinforces our faulty thinking in the dynamics of the relationship. So where a narcissistic parent can treat you so well, where a narcissistic partner can treat you so well, when they're treating you horrifically, we tend to look for the times that they can treat as well. As they're usually blaming us for why they're treating us horrifically, we can sort of question ourselves, change ourselves, walk on eggshells around them to please them, to bring out the nice side in them, which confirms within us that we're the one that's the issue and not them. We can also just have that wishful thinking. We can cling on to the hope that they will change if we just try and approach them in a different way on a different day, if the outside circumstances, once they get that promotion, once they do this, that and the other, everything will be okay. And a narcissist will help you with this, with their future faking, and they will promise you something in the future to get their needs met in the present, to keep you clinging on to that false hope. 
despite mountains of evidence to the contrary, we often can stay trapped in the dynamics of a toxic relationship due to that wishful thinking. If only our parent was more like, if only they could see, one day they'll recognise. We can also sort of have that halo effect, which leads us to idolise our parents, idolise our partners, idolise our friends from when they can treat us well and overlook the abusive or the toxic behaviour. We can be naive to the behaviour, we can excuse and justify it, as well as the narcissist gaslighting, claiming that we're imagining things or we're being too sensitive, we're overreacting, we're the one that can't take the joke. We question ourselves and not them. We can also have that sort of anchor bias where we focus on the abuser's fleeting moments of kindness and generosity. Because again, if they were to treat you horrifically all the time from the word go, more often than not, you wouldn't want anything to do with them. So they know exactly when to treat you well. So we kind of hang on to those moments of kindness and generosity, which every action with a narcissist is a transaction. They're only treating you well because they want something from you, but we don't always recognise this, which means we then tend to ignore their toxic and their manipulative and their abusive patterns of behaviour. Or we simply don't have the awareness to understand what this behaviour is. We can be quite naive to the dynamics of the situation. And often when we get out of a narcissistic relationship, we can be quite bitter and cynical, a normal reaction to everything that you've been through. And it's finding the realistic approach of not being too naive, but not being too cynical finding the right balance, which is how a narcissistic individual gets you trapped because they have that balance of treating you well to a certain extent and then treating you poorly just enough when you've hit that point of you've had enough, they reel you back in and treat you well again to keep you confused, to keep you trapped. trapped. Victims can also fall prey to the sunk cost fallacy where you've given so much time so much energy so many resources years of your life to making this sort of relationship work you've given your finances you've given your hopes your dreams and it can influence your decision to continue to invest in a relationship that's just draining you taking everything away from you like those penny slot machines that you put a couple of pennies in and 20 or 30 fall out and you think oh this is good yet the more you keep going eventually you're the one that loses and the machine is the one that gains the more you provide and give and serve a narcissistic person the more they will treat take from you the saying is, it, it costs nothing to be kind. Yet, if you are kind to a narcissist, they will take advantage of your kindness and completely drain and destroy you. Despite a mountain of evidence of abuse over time, we are that emotionally and often financially invested in the relationship. People can fall prey to the sunk cost fallacy. Cognitive bias often leads people to downplay the severity of the abuse, the severity of the dynamics of the toxic relationship, rationalising and justifying the abusive behaviour. The victim is the one who is often left blaming and questioning everything about themselves, while the narcissist blames and questions everybody else and doesn't reflect on their own toxic behaviour because to a narcissist, nothing is ever their fault. It's always somebody else's fault. Leading to making those decisions that keep you trapped in a toxic relationship with a narcissistic individual.
And then we do have things like the guilt of walking away, the fear of walking away. There's so many things that keep people trapped in these relationships. It's just not as straight cut and dry as this relationship is toxic, I'm off. However, the majority of people get to a point where they recognise that they just cannot take any more. The cost in staying is more detrimental than the cost in leaving. And they do find a way out. Many people do end up leaving with nothing. However, they build their lives back up again. Narcissistic individuals just repeat their toxic behaviour. It's who they are as a person. They're not willing to reflect. Therefore, they don't learn. Therefore, they don't change. They just find new ways to manipulate people and new people to manipulate. If anyone has any thoughts on this video, please do add those into the comments for people reading through. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support of the channel. It's greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about narcissistic behaviour to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with within your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot get no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you understand and overcome narcissistic and emotional abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. If you are looking for further help and support in understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse, I do have several online guides available and those teachable links are in the video description. If you're looking for someone to speak to, I have partners with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is also in the video description. I do also have several books out on Amazon, 15 rules to deal with narcissistic people if you cannot go no contact, a narcissist handbook which is the ultimate guide to understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse and how to create boundaries around those who have no respect for your boundaries. They'll be in the description also if you'd like to go and check those out. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.